Hey guys. What's up, Professor? Just one class to the other. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, for you it's just going well, one uh, one to the other. Yeah. Uh, this is this is convenient, I guess, because it's uh, you don't have to move. Um, but I, I know once we start going back, then we'll we'll have to uh, physically walk from one class to the other. But at least I'll have you there to uh, to walk with me. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to be doing ANSYS today, and so if you guys have it on your computers, um, you go ahead and start it up. It, it takes a little bit of time to start up, especially depending on your computer. So um, yeah, definitely want to get that started. Close this. Professor, you ever buy anything from McMaster Car? I used to. Um, I, I used to do that a lot um, for my internship, um, but I haven't. I haven't done anything recently, just because all my work has been uh, computational. Fair enough. I, I use them a few times over my summer internship, and I'm uh, gonna end up using them, I think, for my graduate project, which I'm building the bill of materials pretty much today. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, it's it's a it's a great service. It's. It's, it's kind of, I, I don't know, do they still do it where they deliver stuff like next day? Yeah, they're super fast. So over my internship, um, I had to order from them two times and we got the parts next day. Wow. That's incredible. Cause like a lot of things you, you can buy on there are like, you know, big ass, like steel beams. And so like, how are they moving those things? Like next day <laughs> they, they arrive at your, at your doorstep. It's yeah, it's, 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 they have a good system. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't speak to the larger items. Um, cause the stuff that I was buying was, um, mainly tools mm -hmm. uh, that I was going to use for uh, a procedure. I was writing on cleaning one of the machines on the line I was supporting. Um, so it, it wasn't really large items, but they, they got them out to me really quickly. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> Yeah, they're, they're a little bit pricier. I think uh, if you look around, I think you can probably get the same thing cheaper somewhere else. But yeah, you can't beat the the shipping and, you know, how quick they turn it around for you. Yeah, there's an item that they have up there um, that was like $1,700 mm -hmm. uh, that I need something similar to that item for my project. And I found one for like 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Th it's kind of a big difference there. On that <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to break uh, Dr. Lee's bank for my project. Here with that one. <laughs> it's okay. Actually, if he's in the same boat as me, he probably needs to spend his money. <laughs> they, uh, they give us a startup fund and uh, uh, we have to spend it. Otherwise we, we lose it. So uh, I'm actually scrambling to figure out what I, what I can buy that, uh, that can support my research. Um, you know, Cause I, I have, a, I have a lot of money left. That's pretty awesome. The, the actuator I'm using for my, uh, project is kind of pricey though. That one's like sixteen hundred dollars. So mm. that's a that's probably the big item. That I and see. my load cell are, are pretty expensive. I see. I see. That makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. So that's where all the money's going. Everything else I need to be as cheap as possible on. I think.
Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. If you guys have answers on your computers, now would be a great time to fire it up because um, it, it does take a little bit of time to, to start up. Yeah. Um, all right. It's 530. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, once again, you know, I, I want to thank you guys for, for being flexible. I, I know it's been a really awkward first week because, uh, you know, even I, I even I expected to be in person and, and to see all you guys um, 
um, in, in person, but, um, uh, but yeah, I'm still awaiting the, the results of my COVID test. Um, my cough actually got a little bit worse today. And so I, I think it's probably good that I, I stayed home. So, um, so thank you guys for being flexible and, and for meeting online um, and, uh, you know, still continuing on with the, with this class. And so how's, uh, how's everyone feeling today? Good, good. Good, good. Great, living life. Good, good, good. good. Sounds good. Yep, yeah. sounds like everyone's having a good first week. So that's, uh, that's good. Okay. All right, and so today, uh, today we're gonna be doing our first ANSYS activity. Um, I know it's, it's, it's really early, but you know, we're just gonna jump right into the software. Okay. And so I've, I have a lot of ANSYS activities planned for this class. And so we're gonna do one basically every other week. And so, uh, you know, we need to start kind of early now so that we can start, you know, we can get to, get to, we can get to the more fun stuff later on, okay? Um, and so if, if you're taking, if, if this is your second or third uh, finite element class with me, so I, I, I do apologize that this, this activity hasn't really changed much um, over the years. Um, mostly just because, you know, I, um, you know, a lot of people, I, I know a lot of people here are using ANSYS for the first time. And so I think this is kind of a good entry point and it's, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to come up with new, new entry points. <laughs> Never seen this before in my life. That is a, that is a big lie. I know that for sure. But, uh, but thank you. Thank you for, thank you for uh, humoring me. <laughs> okay. And so today we're going to be, uh, we're going to be working on this. And so um, if you've downloaded ANSYS onto your computer, um, or if you're inside the computer lab, or if you're um, using the virtual computer lab, you know, now would be a good time to fire up the ANSYS, right? And so if you've never, if you haven't launched ANSYS yet, um, oh, I wonder why I have two. And so the pro the program that you want to launch is called Workbench, okay? And so um, if you if you click the Start menu, and you go to Ansys on your computer, you can see that there's a, a crap ton of different Ansys stuff that's uh, that's there. Uh, and so the one you want to open is called Workbench, and, and so it's the one on the bottom, okay? And so if you want to click that right now, it'll take probably you know a good few minutes to to boot up. And so you can you can let that run in the background while we're kind of talking about other stuff, okay? And so go ahead and hit that, and then um, you know we're gonna go ahead and start um, other stuff, okay? Uh, and so the first thing, but the first thing I, I want to do today, just because uh, we didn't get a chance to do this on Monday, <coughs> excuse me, um, is to go over the course website, okay? Because I, I want to make sure that you know um, you kind of know where to find everything on the course website, because it's uh, every faculty kind of designs their course website differently, and so you know I want to make sure that you know we're all. Um, you know, you kind of you kind of know how I organize stuff. Okay, all right. And so, if you go to the homepage for our course website, you can see here that the uh, the title of the class is up here. Okay, computer applications and engineering design. Right, okay? and so you can see here we have basic information. So you have uh, my name, and if you you can see that this link is clickable, and you can go to my like weird Tinder profile for my teaching. You can read that if you want. Okay. Uh, and you have my email here too, okay? And so if you ever forget my email, you know it's it's right here on the homepage of the of the course website, okay? Um, oh, um, here are our class times. And so it's not virtual actually. So actually, let me change that. Quick online uh, edit, okay? So there's just class times, okay? All right. <clears throat> Right, and so those are our class times, and so it's Monday, Wednesday, uh, 5.30 to 6.45, okay? <laughs> uh, and then the location for this is in CS309, which is a special instruction. So, um, you know, you can, yeah, of course, you can be there in the classroom right now or, um, um, or you know, while we're virtual, you can be at home too, okay? All right, and so here we have the course description, and so here's the uh, um, description that I've written for the course, and so you can kind of read that um, yourself, okay? And here are the course level learning objectives. And so, um, you know, these are going to be our guiding lights for our for the course. Okay. Um, and here you can you can see um, you can start to see some of the more useful stuff, right? And so first we have the syllabus, and so you can click this. Um, you can download the syllabus from from here. Okay. And so we went over that on Monday. Um, so here are all the Zoom links for the for the office hours. Okay. And so you can click these and and come to office hours right there. Um, if you want to join the Discord server, you can click this link uh, right here. And so I know a lot of people have already joined. And so thank you guys for doing that. Um, but if you want to join, you know, and if you have a Discord account, all you have to do is click this link um, and then it'll um, automatically have you join the, the server. OK. Uh, and so, again, you know, joining the Discord server is, is optional. And so it, it's not something that I'm going to require. But um, I think it, I think it is a nice it is a nice space. Right. 
um, especially for a class like this, where we're, we're going to be working a lot with the software. Um, I was I was telling someone earlier in office hours today that it's um, you know a lot of times you know you're going to be running into weird errors and weird things in the software, um, and a lot of times it's a lot faster to ask your classmates for for help on that issue because you know they might have seen the same thing and they might have figured out a way past it. And so, um, and so one one thing that was really difficult about teaching finite elements um, in previous semesters was that. Uh, when people would run into issues with ANSYS during the class, um, I can, you know, when, when we're virtual like this, I can really only help just one person at a time. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, someone would ask for help and I would try to help them, but everyone else in the class would kind of just be waiting for that, right? And so another way that you can do this is you can, if you have an issue, just post about it on the Discord server, um, and then someone else can hopefully answer your question, okay? <coughs> And so, you know, when we're in person, you know, uh, one way that, um, you know, uh, one way that this manifests is that, you know, a lot of times you come in there with your, your friends and you're sitting next to someone and you run into an issue and you say, you go over to your neighbor and say, hey, you know, can you help me out with this? And then you kind of work collaboratively like that, right? Um, and so, you know, the Discord server kind of gives you a chance to do that um, as well. And so don't be shy to post your problems on, on the Discord server. I promise you there's no there's no silly question. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us are, are learning answers for the very first time, right? And so when you're learning something for the very first time, you know, a lot of things may not be clear, right? And so don't be afraid to ask questions, even simple things like, you know, where is this button? Where did he click? You know, how did he get here? Things like that, um, you know. Um, use that Discord server. It's, it's it's there for you guys, and it's there for you guys to interact. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and so now let's let's go over the uh, weekly view. Okay. And so this is probably where you're going to spend most of your time on the course website. Is looking at this kind of schedule right here at the bottom of the at the bottom of the page. Okay. And you can see here I've listed out each of the 16 different weeks in the uh, in the semester. Okay. And as we get along in the semester, each of these weeks will be clickable. Right. Um, and I try, I try to put the weekly stuff up um, um, the Friday before the week, right? And so the stuff for week two will be up on Friday, okay? And so if you click on this link, it'll take you to a, a new page here, okay? And on this page, you can read kind of just an introductory blurb of what we're going to cover that week. Um, you can read up on the learning objectives for the week, okay? Um, you can look at the lecture recordings for the week, right? And so the the recording from um, from Monday is here. And so if you click this, it'll take you to YouTube, right? And you can see um, see that, okay? So we're not going to watch it, okay? Um, and you can see all the assignments here as well, right? And so you can see, you know, we have homework zero here, which is the introduction, and we also have the ANSYS activities, right? And so if you click these, it'll take you to a page. My Zoom bar is in the way, okay? Um, and it will uh, basically give you a way to download the specification, um, all the instructions for this, and then a way for you to submit, okay? Right. And then uh, you can find all the files for the week here as well, okay? And so any, basically any lecture notes or any lecture slides for the week, you can find in these weekly pages, okay? And so make sure you visit these pages each week because they're going to have a lot of useful information, a lot of useful content for you uh, for that you can use for the class, okay? Um, all right. So, any questions? Uh, any questions on this so far? Any question. Uh, can you include the normal lecture link on the main page? Um, yes, actually, yeah, that's that's a good idea because, um, and and I think now is a good time to mention it too. And so, you know, a lot of students have have come up to me um, over the past couple of days, um, you know, with concerns about, you know, what if you guys get COVID or what if you guys have to take some time out because. Um, I know a lot of you guys, you know, they might, you might be living in, in certain situations where, you know, it'd be really bad to get COVID. And so I do, I do plan to record every single lecture. And so I do plan to open up a Zoom session, even for the in-person ones. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we, there's not a good place in the classroom for a camera. Um, yeah. And so there's not a good place for a, a place uh, in the lecture hall for a camera where you can view the whole board, but I'll try to put it in kind of a central location where you can kind of see, see stuff. Yeah. And so I'll I'll put the I'll put the uh, the lecture Zoom link on the homepage as well, uh, where you guys can can find it. Um, yeah, um, because I, I will be opening up a Zoom session for every single lecture, you know, even the ones that are in person. And so if you guys get COVID or if you guys are feeling sick, you can still participate in the lecture from from home. Because I think I think that'll be that'll be an involving issue for this semester. Yeah. So I'll 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 put the link on the homepage so that it's 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 much easier to see. Yeah. Good uh, good question. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So, any uh, any questions on uh, any other questions on on this? Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> um, all right. And so, um, and so that's that's probably where you're going to spend most of your time here on the course websites. But you can see that there's some other tabs here, right? And so next, you can look at the announcements, right? Um, and so here you can see a list of all the previous announcements from the uh, from the class. Okay. Um, next, we have assignments, and so this page right here will will list out all the different assignments that I've um, that I'm giving. Okay. Uh, next, we have grades, and so here we'll show you a breakdown of of, of each of the grades um, for your um, you know for each of your assignments. Uh, oh, the Discord isn't working. Um, let me. Uh, uh, I'll I'll check it. I'll check it after the the class. Is it is it the links not working, or is that you you don't see anything when you when you join? When I click the link, um, it doesn't like it opens a Discord app, but nothing happens. Okay. Um, all right. Let's 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 talk after class, and then I, I can I can help you with that. Um, I might I might have to regenerate the link. The link might have expired. I might have to generate a new link. Yeah. Um, okay. And so uh, here's uh, here's where you can see the the grades. Okay. Uh, and if you click the people's tab, you can um, you can you can see who else is in the class. And so here's everyone that's enrolled. Okay. And if you click on files right here, you can see um, here's kind of a, a list of all the different files that are uploaded. Okay, and you can see here I've, I've organized the files into ANSYS files, assignments. Um, those are just images that I have here. Um, the final project, um, lecture notes, midterm project, and solutions. And so, if you're looking for a specific file, you know you can probably look for it in this in this tab right here. Okay. Um, okay, and so that's the uh, that's the course website. And so, are there uh, are there any 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 other questions on the on the course website before we move on? Okay, all right. And so, um, yeah. And so, you know, definitely um, definitely check check the course website often because I, I update it, you know, at least every week. Um, and so, you know, if you want to download the lecture notes, you know, uh, for the upcoming week, a week before. You know that'll be that'll be available for you um, for you as well. Okay. All right, <laughs> and so let's go ahead and get started with the activity for today. Okay, and so the activity for today is we're going to be using ANSYS to um, simulate a plate with a hole. Okay, and so the physical situation is um, is the following. Okay, and so we have a rectangular plate, right? And so it's going to be made of um, I think it's made of steel. Okay, and then we're going to drill a hole into it, and then we're going to pull on it. Okay. And then what we want to see is, uh, you know, we want to see how much this plate is deflecting, what the stress distribution is in the plate, um, and uh, you know whether the plate is going to break or not. Okay. And so it's it's a relatively simple situation, and so it, it's you know um, honestly it's you know if you if you kind of know what you're doing, you can probably knock out this activity in probably like ten minutes. Um, but you know I think it's a it's a really nice introductory activity because it, it it really puts us through all the different steps of the finite element process. And it kind of serves as a kind of a nice introduction to the ANSYS software, okay? Right, and so here are the dimensions for the plate, right? And so here are, um, you know, all the dimensions we're gonna be working with, and we're gonna simulate this in ANSYS, right? And so just to give you a sneak preview of what, uh, what we're gonna end up with, you know, we're gonna end up with results that look like this, okay? So after we're done simulating, you know, we're gonna produce a, a color contour plot where you can, we can see here, um, in this case, you know, we're looking at the stress distribution in the plate, okay? Uh, and we're going to figure out basically how we can how we can solve this. Okay, okay. and so let's go ahead and start uh, and start working on this. Okay. All right, and so if you've opened up Workbench, you can you'll probably have a screen like this. And so hopefully everyone opened it up, um, you know, at the beginning of lecture today, and you have the screen. Um, but if not, um, you know, I'll show you how to open it up again. And so you know, if you're if you kind of um, joined a little bit late. Um, when you open up ANSYS, the, the program that you want to launch is called Workbench, okay? So open up your start menu, go to ANSYS, um, probably your guys is going to be 2021, um, and then click on Workbench down here, okay? And then after a couple minutes, it's going to open up this, um, um, this section here, okay? All right. And so from here, I'm going to show you basically how to run the analysis. And then um, all throughout, I'm going to be referring back to our beginning lecture notes um, which showed kind of the full the full finite element process. Okay. All right. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, you know specify what type of simulation that we're going to run. Okay. And so um, you know if you look at this list right here, these are all the different types of simulation that simulations that you can run in ANSYS. Okay. And you can see it's a lot. There's ANSYS is a pretty it's a pretty diverse tool, and you can do a lot of different analysis types in it. Okay. 
Um, and so we're not going to cover all of this in in uh, in here because um, um, because honestly, you know, half of these things I, I'm I'm I, I haven't I don't have any experience working with them, uh, but we are going to cover a lot of these. Okay, and so we're going to cover you know. We're going to spend a lot of time with static structural, but we're also going to do some thermal. We're going to do some optimization. We're going to do some vibration analysis, modal analysis, and so we're going to be doing a lot. Okay, um, but you know, for the just to start out with, we're going to do kind of the simplest, um, the simplest case that we can uh, that we can think of, which is a static structural simulation. Okay, and so a static structural simulation is a uh, you know you're going to be solving the equation for structural dynamics. But we're going to do them in a static sense, and so we're going to be doing a, a situation that does not change with time. Okay, and so the way that we start this is we we go from this toolbox here, and then we highlight static structural. Okay, and then we're going to click it with our mouse, and then we're going to drag it over to the to the mid section right here. Okay, and so when you click on static structural and you drag it over here, you can see that it creates a new box, and then what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to drop static structural into this box. Okay. <coughs> Um, and you can see here is going to create a new static structural system for us uh, right here. Okay. Um, all right. So was uh, was everyone able to um, was everyone able to create this static structural system here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. And so if you if you have any questions, uh, yeah, don't be if don't be afraid to um, you know just to say something or or say something in the chat. Okay. All right. And so now that we have this here, now we're ready to start. You know. Um, um, doing the finite element process. Okay. And so if you go back to our beginning lecture notes, you can see that the first step that we need to do here is to um, define the geometry. Okay. And so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to um, basically CAD up our geometry or basically, um, you know, uh, create a CAD, um, CAD model that represents our geometry. Okay. And you can see here that it's the, um, it's the first step here that, that has a question mark here that, uh, that we need to do. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and so, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna work on this. But before we do anything, I want you guys to left left click geometry here, okay? And then we're gonna go over to this right side of the screen here, which is the properties for the geometry, all right? And so on this side of the screen here, you know, I want you guys to go to line seventeen. Uh, you know, it might be different for you guys, but you know, I basically want you guys to go to the setting called analysis type, okay? And you can see here that the default is three D, all right? Oops, shoot. Right. And so uh, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to change this to 2D. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I don't have that. I don't have that right box. Yeah, me neither. Okay. The right uh, sidebar. Uh, right. So you might have to click properties. And so one way um, that you can get this, you can right click on geometry here and then click properties. And then by doing that, um, this this bar on the right should be. Should yes. it be. Did that, uh, did that yes, work? Yes, it worked. OK. Yeah, so you, you want to right click geometry and click uh, properties. Okay. Yeah. And did that uh, did that show did that make the thing on the right show up? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, and so in the properties menu, uh, you're going to change the analysis type and you're going to change it from 3D to 2D. Okay. Um, because we're doing a 2D analysis here and so we want to make sure that ANSYS knows we're doing 2D, right? And so that'll that'll save us a lot of computational uh, computational effort, right? And so most of the time, you know, we're going to be doing a 3D analysis, but, um, you know, for this case, we're just doing 2D. Okay. All right. And so now that we've set this to 2D analysis, now we're ready to start uh, constructing our geometry, right? And so I want you guys to right click geometry here. Um, and then I want you to click on this button here called new design model or geometry. Okay. And so um, you have to be careful here because um, it's not the default. And so the default geometry um, CAD software is called SpaceClaim, uh, but we're not going to work on SpaceClaim until you know later on the semester. And so we want to do design modeler, okay? And so you're going to right click on geometry and click uh, new design modeler geometry, which should be the second option for you guys, okay? Right. And so it's it's going to launch another program, and so this program is called uh, Design Modeler, and it's one of the CAD packages that are inside um, ANSYS. And so this is one of their their CAD softwares. Um, it's not as robust as SolidWorks, but it's um, you know it it's it it works for kind of simple cases like this. So it's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> All right, and so um, you know, after you open up Design Modeler, you should see this uh, this window here, right? Um, so, was everyone able to open up uh, Design Modeler? 
Yes. Okay, great. All right, and so now we're ready to start drawing the geometry, okay? Okay, and so uh, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna draw a sketch in a, uh, in a plane, right? And so the first, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the units um, that we're gonna be working with, okay? And so we go back to the problem specifications you can see that all of these dimensions here, the length and the width and the hole diameter, all of these are given in millimeters, okay? And so it'd be really convenient if the, if the, if the design modeler that we're working with was also in millimeters, okay? And so at the top here, we're gonna click units, okay? And then we're gonna click on the, the option for millimeter, which is right here, okay? Um, and then by clicking millimeter, then all the dimensions that we're going to set are going to be there because, you know, um, the default is meters, um, but, you know, millimeters will be a lot more convenient for our, for our case because that's, that's the dimensions that was given to us. Okay. All right. And so let's go ahead and change that to millimeters. Right. And so when you click it, it should put, it should put a check mark next to millimeters like that. Right? And then now we're, uh, we're ready to, to sketch. Okay, and so uh, we're gonna do this sketch in the XY plane, okay? And so um, the easiest way that I, I find to center the view on the XY plane is to click on this Z axis right here, okay? And so in the bottom right of your screen, you should see an XYZ axis, okay? What I want you guys to do is to highlight over the, the blue Z axis here and then just click it, okay? And then by clicking it, what it should do is it should, it should snap the view into the XY plane, okay? And so now you're looking directly on the, the Z axis right here. Okay. okay. And so now that we're looking at the Z axis here, we're, we're ready to start um, sketching. Okay. And so to start sketching, you wanna go to the left of, of the design modeler window and click sketching right here. Okay. And so it's, it's a little bit hard to see. And so it's on kind of the middle left of the screen, right? And so there's two tabs here, one for modeling and one for sketching. <coughs> And so you want to click on the on the sketching button, right? And then by doing that, you you can see here that we have a, a lot of shapes that are available to us to, um, for us to start our sketch. Okay. All right. And so let's uh, and so let's start sketching. And so uh, we're going to start with a rectangle. Okay. And so we're going to click on the rectangle right here, and then it's going to um, allow us to draw a rectangle, and then just draw just an arbitrary rectangle that um, that goes across the screen just like that. Okay. Um, it doesn't really matter how big it is right now because we're going to dimension it in a little bit, but just uh, draw a rectangle for us to, to start with, okay? Um, all right, so uh, was everyone able to um, draw a sketch and then get a rectangle in their, in their sketch? Yes. yes. Great. All right, and so now let's, uh, now let's put some dimensions on this rectangle, okay? And so under the, under the sketching um, tab here, um, you should be able to see a button here called dimensions, right? And so let's go ahead and click dimensions. And then now this is this is going to allow us to add dimensions to our to our part here, okay? And so dimensions are basically just specifying how long or how big certain parts of our part are, okay? All right. And so um, you know, using this general dimension tool right here, general is, is fine for now. I want you guys to click the upper the upper horizontal um, edge of the rectangle, okay? If you click it and you drag it out, you can you can see that we're we can we can define this dimension here, okay? And so you click once on the edge and then you click once again outside. Um, and then you can see here, we've, we've defined this dimension here, right? Um, and you can see that this dimension here, it's, it's a little, probably a little bit hard for you guys to see um, on the, uh, um, on the, um, um, on the uh, from on, over Zoom, but you can see that this dimension here is called H1, okay? Um, and so if you wanna set a value for H1, what you need to do is you need to go to the bottom left of the screen under this details view. And you can see here that, you know, we have a value here for H1. And so right now H1 is a 97.569 millimeters. Um, at least that's what it is for me. Probably for you guys, it's something different because you do your rectangle differently. Okay. Uh, but we need to set, we need to set this length to be 300 millimeters. Okay. Cause that's what it is in the, uh, um, in the specifications. Okay. And so let's go ahead and, Oh, question? It's not happening for me. Oh, say again? It's not happening for me. I'm, uh, I, click, I pressed the uh, horizontal and then clicked on the the line, but I didn't have a second line up here like yours. Ah, yeah, because the for uh, so for the horizontal dimension, that that defines the uh, horizontal distance in between two different vertical lines. Um, and so what you need to do is you need to click general right here. 
Is okay. you click general okay. and then you click the line and then it should it should come out. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said horizontal. Sorry. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, general okay. um, general will let you set the set the length of a certain uh, of a certain of a certain line. We'll we'll use the horizontal one in a little bit, um, just to center this rectangle on the origin. But um, but for now we can just do general. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, now that you have this uh, this dimension here, let's go ahead and set this to 300 millimeters. Okay, and so on the bottom left of the screen, you're going to click on H1, and you're going to click uh, or type 300 into your keyboard. Okay, and you can see that it made the rectangle a lot bigger. Uh, oh, by the way, if you if you want to if you want to pan the screen, um, and you have a if you're using a mouse, I just looked into the laser of my mouse and I did it again. Um, you can you can hold down the the middle click or hold down the mouse wheel, and hold control on your keyboard, and what that'll do is it'll let you pan the pan the screen, right? And so that's that's useful if you want to kind of pan left and pan pan right. right? Okay, and so that's the uh, and so that's the that's the horizontal length of the uh, of the plate. Okay, now we need to set the vertical length, uh, and so um, still um, still using the general dimensioning tool. Let's go ahead and click the vertical side of the plate. Let's go ahead and bring it out, okay? And you can see that the uh, the name for this dimension is V2, okay? And so let's go ahead and set this to, I think it's 200. Yeah, 200 millimeters. Okay, okay. and you can see now that we've uh, we've made our rectangle 300 by 200, uh, which is, you know, what, um, you know, which is what it is in the, uh, in the specifications, okay? All right, was, was everyone able to dimension their, uh, um, um, the, the height and the width of the of the plate yes okay yes. Great. great okay and so um, now that we have the the plate is the uh, is the right size um, we need to center this because right now you know I, I don't know about you guys but right now mines is kind of off center uh, and since we're going to be drawing a, a hole in the middle of this plate it'd be really nice if we if we centered this um, if we centered this rectangle on on the orge right and so now we're going to use the other dimensioning tools right and so let's start with horizontal. And so what the horizontal dimensioning tool is gonna do is it's gonna set the horizontal distance uh, in between two vertical lines, right? And so in order to use this tool, you need to click on multiple different uh, lines here, right? <coughs> and so from this dimensioning um, tool, you're gonna click on horizontal here. Um, first, you're gonna click on the left edge of the, um, of the, of the plate. Um, then I want you to click on the horizontal axis right here, which is the the green um, this green arrow here. Okay. And then by clicking on those two lines, it's going to create this new dimension here called H three. Okay. And this H three is the distance between this um, this vertical line and this vertical axis right here. Okay. And then in order to center this, we want this distance to be half of the length of the of this edge right here. Right. And so since this entire um, length here is 300, <clears throat> we're gonna set this dimension to be 150, okay? And so let's go ahead and change it to 150, okay? And so now our plate is, uh, is oriented kind of horizontally, you know, well. And so it's horizontally centered, okay? And so we're gonna do the same thing with the vertical one, right? And so for the vertical one, you can choose either one on the top or the bottom. Um, I'm gonna choose the bottom just because it's a little bit closer, right? And so with the vertical dimensioning tool highlighted, we're gonna click on the bottom edge and then we're gonna click on the X axis, okay? And then that's gonna create a new dimension V4. And then since we want to center this, we're gonna set V4 equal to 100, okay? And you can see now that um, our rectangle now has the right height and has the right uh, width. Um, and it's also centered correctly on the, on the origin, right? <coughs> um, all right, and so, um, was everyone able to um, center their rectangle on the on the origin? Yes. Is there a way to yes. edit the name uh, of these dimensions? Yeah, or like move it around. Um, that's a good question. Um, I actually don't. I actually don't know. Um, usually, usually, uh, usually, I don't mess with that. Um, usually, the the way that they're they're numbered is uh, usually they they there's the number after them is. Is based on what dimension or what order that you you define the dimensions in, <clears throat> and you can so you can see we have one two three four, uh, and so you know that tells us we have four dimensions, um, and then the letter tells you you know whether it's a horizontal dimension or a vertical dimension or something else like that. 
Um, and so I, I don't think there's an there's a way to change the uh, um, change the names just because I, I think they have kind of a systematic way of, of doing that. Um, but usually if there is, usually if you do F2, no, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's a way to change the uh, change the names. Oops, okay. that did something Nice, it's like H, different H's, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would be it would be convenient, but uh, but yeah, usually I, I haven't tried yet, but I, I would have to look and see if there if there is. But it looks like there's no convenient way to, to do it because you can only delete. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so now that we've dimensioned the plate, let's go ahead and draw the hole in the middle, right? And so let's go back to the drawing tool, right? And so if we click on draw right here, kind of near the top, right? And so let's go ahead and click on circle. And then we're gonna draw a circle at the origin, okay? And so you can click once to uh, click once on the origin to place the uh, uh, where the circle is located, and you can drag your mouse out to uh, set the size of the circle. Okay. It doesn't really matter how big you make the circle yet. Um, you know we're going to be dimensioning it anyway. And so let's go ahead and um, just draw the circle out, and then let's go back to the dimension tool, click on general dimension, <clears throat> click anywhere on the circle. Right, and you, you can see that we've created a new dimension called D5, right? And then I believe the diameter of the circle should be 50 millimeters, okay? And so let's go ahead and set this to be 50, okay? And then there is our hole, okay? And so now we have our plate defined, we have our hole defined. Um, and so now we're ready to um, turn this into an actual um, CAD geometry, okay? Um, all right, so was everyone able to to draw the hole on their on their plate? Yes, it's yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. All right. And so now that we have our, our sketch defined, let's go back and let's go back to the modeling tab. And so uh, um, on this bottom or the middle left um, portion of the screen, let's go back and click modeling right here. Okay. Um, and then let's uh, let's go ahead and create a surface from the sketch, okay? Because uh, right now, right now it's just a sketch, and so we haven't really committed it to any surface or anything for our for our geometry. Okay. All right, and so in order to where'd you go? Oh, I, I went to modeling right here, and so uh, from sketching, I clicked on modeling uh, right here on this uh, on this tab right here. All right, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so uh, in order to turn this into a surface, uh, we need to go click on concept at the top. Okay. Um, and then from this uh, concept um, screen at the top. Uh, concept button, we're going to click on the button called surfaces from sketches. Okay. Um, and then what this is going to do is that it's going to allow us to take a sketch and then turn it into a, um, a CAD surface um, in order uh, so that we can run a finite element simulation on it. Okay? And so let's go ahead and click uh, surface from sketches. Okay. And so you can see here it's created a new surface sketch object right here. Right. And then we can view the properties for it right here. And then what we need to do here is we need to um, we need to apply this to one of our sketches. Okay. And so right now we've sorry, Professor, it's telling me base objects not selected. Uh oh, uh, for for this one. Uh, so I opened up the the surface from sketches tool, and yep. then um, I can't click the surface from sketches and get the properties. It's telling me base object isn't uh, selected. I see. Yeah, you, uh, we need we need to assign a sketch to it, and so in order to assign a sketch, um, can you click on this uh, plus arrow next to X Y plane, um, okay. and then click on this sketch one, okay. and then with and so with sketch one highlighted right here, you're going to click on apply here on the bottom left. Well, I don't have um, sketch one. Oh, I have surface S K one. Maybe is that it? Uh, no. So that's and so that's that's the one that we're uh, that's the one that we're doing. And so, uh, do you have your the sketch of your rectangle and the uh, and the hole? Yeah, I have it completed here, but I don't have that. I don't have the option to click on the sketch for some reason. You you don't have uh, you don't have any sketches um, up here that um, that you. Can oh, okay. Click. I found it. I found it. Okay. okay. Great. Perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and so and once. And then click on. Um, sorry. And then click on surface from sketches. Yes, yeah, and so uh, and so you, you've already created the object, and so you're going to click on, first you're going to click on Surface SK1 right here, um, and then okay. um, with that highlighted, you're going to click on Sketch 1, and then you're going to click uh, Apply right here on the bottom left. Oh, it's not letting me click both of them at the same time. 
Um, okay, let me uh, uh, let's uh, I'll, I'll 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 double back with you kind of after the um, after the um, after the lecture just so uh, just because I want to make sure I, I get through everything else for for everyone else. Okay. Um, okay, and so um, you know once you uh, if you if you were able to apply the uh, the sketch you should you should have this uh, on the bottom left right here you should say base objects uh, one sketch okay, uh, and then what you need to do here is you need to click generate. Okay, and then after you click generate, it should create your surface for you just like this. Okay, as you can see here, we have a uh, um, you know a very thin surface, which is a um, our plate with our hole in the middle. Okay, um, so were were some people able to to reach this point where they're able to generate the uh, um, the sketch or yes. generate the surface? Yeah. Then yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, so how did I generate it? So there's a there's a button up here called generate, uh, which has kind of this lightning bolt next to it. Yeah. Yep. Oh yes, thank you. Yeah. And so uh, and so there is uh, and so we can assign a thickness to this plate, and so we can do that here. And so let's go ahead and do that. And so um, you know, even though this is a two D object right here, it, it's representing a three D object. And so we need to rep and then so we need to input the thickness for this. And so um, the thickness for this plate, even though you're not going to be able to see it. Is going to be five millimeters. Yeah. And so let's go ahead and hit uh, five millimeters and go ahead and click generate again. And so now the thickness of this plate is going to be five, uh, five millimeters. Okay. And so that's, uh, that's what's given here. Okay. All right. And so um, now that we have this, and so we've, uh, we've um, defined our geometry. And so now that we have this geometry here, we're ready to move on to the next stage of our, of our analysis, which is specifying material properties. Okay. All right, so does it, uh, anyone have any final questions on the um, on the CAD geometry here? Okay. Okay, I really don't want to get left behind here. So I'm just confused still. It keeps telling me base object not selected when I when I'm in this other, and then when I select the sketch, it's not selecting it for my base object. I see. Um, hmm. um, do you uh, do you feel comfortable sharing your screen? I think that might be the easiest thing for me to look at. Sure. Um, okay. Let me go ahead and stop sharing, and let me go ahead and allow you to share. Great. Um, and so for those, uh, so for those of you who um, who have it, you know, all, all the instructions are actually listed in the PDF. And so if you want to keep going in the PDF, you know, definitely feel free to do that. But uh, but let me help Jacob um, real quick, just to make sure that okay, we're all on the same page. I see, I see. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so can you click, uh, and so on the, uh, on base objects on the bottom left, can you click on not selected, click on, click on that? Okay. Oh, um, huh, yeah, that's kind of weird. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, what's up? This happened to me. And I just, I just deleted it and did concept again. Uh -huh. And then, you know, pretty much just started over and it worked. Okay. 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 I think what happened was he pressed generate a little early and then it like threw an error for the whole thing. So you just got to delete it and start over. I see. I see. Yeah. So, so Jacob, uh, yeah. So go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and right click surface SK1. You can click uh, delete. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then go okay. to uh, concept again, surface from sketches. Okay. And then click on uh, click on sketch one at the top. Okay. Click on a uh, click on apply in the bottom left. Okay. okay. And then try clicking generate. Oh, perfect. All right, okay. you're good to go. And All right. This is as far as we've gotten, right? Um, you can set the thickness, and so on the bottom left you see uh, thickness. Oh yeah. So set that to five millimeters. And then hit uh, generate one more time. Okay. Yeah. And you're good. And so you can go ahead and close uh, design modeler. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, sh and share my screen again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do I? Let me see here. Yeah. You can. You can just exit out of design oh. modeler. So you can. Yeah. So it'll. It'll automatically. It'll automatically save your work actually. And so if you click on this this X arrow here at the top, you just close it, and then it'll it'll save your geometry automatically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And so, uh, and so that's the first step in the, uh, in the finite element process. So we define our geometry. And so the next step is we need to specify our material properties. Okay. 
And so in this case, you know, we have a very simple material. Uh, we just have a Young's modulus of, of 2.0 um, 2 times 10 to the fifth megapascals and a Poisson's ratio of 0 0.3, okay? And so the way we're gonna specify our material properties is we're gonna double click on engineering data here, okay? And so I'm back, I'm back in the workbench menu, right? And so go, go ahead and double click engineering data. And so it's gonna open up this new, um, you know, this new uh, window here, okay? Right? And you can see here that we have one material here loaded by default called structural steel, right? So structural steel is the, uh, is the default material. Uh, is, there, is there a question? Okay. All right. And so um, you can see here that, uh, you know, this uh, material here is called uh, structural steel. And we can look at the Young's modulus and we can look at the Poisson's ratio. Okay. All right. Oops. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, and so if you want to view the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of structural steel, you need to go to the bottom here, right? And then the properties are going to be listed under isotropic elasticity, right? So let's go ahead and click this plus arrow here, okay? And you can see here that um, now we can view things for the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio, okay? And so you can see here that the, the Young's modulus is 2.0 times 10 to the 11 pascals, okay? If we want to if we want to change how this is displayed, we can change this to megapascals, okay? And you can see here that our Young's modulus is 2.0 times 10 to the fifth megapascals, and our Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3, okay? And conveniently enough, this is exactly what we need um, because, you know, I wrote this assignment and I made sure that it's convenient, right? And so we don't have to do anything with this. And so, you know, um, what we've done is we, what we've done here is we basically specify the material properties or we've, we've made sure that the material properties are what we need for this assignment, okay? Uh, but in future projects and future activities, we're gonna be changing these up. Uh, but for this one, just to keep it simple, I just had it set to the defaults, okay? Um, okay, uh, so any questions, on, any questions on this so far? All right, and so um, now that we're done with the engineering data, we can go ahead and close this. And so if you go to kind of the middle top of the screen right here called, uh, you see this tab called A2 engineering data. Uh, we're gonna just click on this X right here. Oh, question. Uh, question, oh, what did I open to open the engineering data? Yeah, and so to open the engineering data, if you go back to your, your standard workbench screen um, and you double click this engineering data right here, right, that's gonna bring up, that's gonna bring up this, this page for you. And so uh, I'll do it again. And so um, for back from the home page on your workbench, and you see engineering data. You double click this, and then it'll bring up this uh, this data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And so now that our material properties are set, our next step is to mesh, right? And so we're going to do this inside a program called Ansys Mechanical, right? And so we need to open up a new program with an Ansys. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, what you'll learn about ANSYS is that it's actually a collection of, uh, of a lot of different programs that kind of work together in, in harmony. And so, you know, a lot of times, you know, the starting point is always Workbench, but Workbench is going to open up a bunch of different programs. And so the next program we're going to open up is called Mechanical. And so the way that you do that is that from the Workbench, um, you can see here, you can go to row four here, which is Model. You can, if you double click that, it's going to open up a new program for you. Um, and it might take a while, and, and it might seem like your computer is doing nothing. Uh, but if you if you check the bottom left of the screen on Workbench, you can see here that it's uh, it's thinking, and so you can see here from this message here that it's starting mechanical. Actually, let me try this. Oh, that's cool. I have a pen here, which uh, you can you can see. Yeah. And so if you if you double click that, you you'll probably see a message down here that it says it's starting mechanical, um, and it and it probably takes a little bit of time to. Uh, um, um, to do, okay. Okay, um, and so I'll give people a couple minutes to, to start mechanical because it can, it can take a little bit of time. Um, but once you open Mechanical, you should be greeted with this screen. And so it, it'll look a little bit similar to Design Modeler, which is the, the program that we saw last time, uh, whereas you should be able to see your geometry here. Um, but the options that for us up here are going to be a lot different. Okay.
So is everyone able to open up uh, Ansys Mechanical? Uh, professor, there is no geometry on my mechanical uh, workbench screen. It, it might still be thinking. And so when, when it first opens up, it, it looks like there's no geometry there, uh, but it might it might still be booting up because it's uh, it takes a while for it to attach the attach the geometry. Okay. Yeah, so if you go back to workbench and if you look at the bottom left here, if it's still if it still says um, starting mechanical, um, then um, you know it's it's still it's still starting up. So mine, mine probably loaded a lot faster than you guys because I, because I was testing it out earlier today. Uh, but if it's if this is the first time you're launching mechanical, it 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 can take a while. Got it. Thank you, professor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be a problem again, but no problem. Mine just says uh, 20, 2021 R two, and it just gives me like this thing, like you know what's new. For mechanical and then it gives me a bunch of links and stuff it doesn't have my geometry in here yeah so i think that's probably so for the first time when you open it up it, it it'll probably do that it's it's really annoying and so if you kind of click around oh, um i see there, here yeah there's there's a there's a way you can close it yeah it is it is really annoying it, it's kind of their way to advertise because it's it's this is a free version of ansys and so they got to try to get you to buy the, the buy the buy the real one that's that's just marketing but um, but yeah, it is, it is a little bit annoying, but yeah, if you close that, you should be able to see this. I clicked on the geometry, I clicked on the geometry tab, but it's not, it's not here. Um, it, oh, you don't, you don't see your, your plate with the hole here? No. Uh, I'll click on the model. Yeah. Okay. So someone in the chat was saying that, um, their geometry didn't show up until they clicked on geometry and then surface body. Yeah. Surface body. Yeah, so if you go on the on the left right here, you click geometry and then you oh. click on surface body right here. Yeah. I got a bunch of windows open. It's hard for me to. Okay. All right. You got it? Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now that we're inside mechanical, um, this is this is kind of where most we're going to spend most of our time with, um, you know, in our uh, in our in this finite element class. Okay. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mesh this geometry, right? And so right now, you know, we have this kind of geometry right here. We have a plate with a hole in the middle. Um, but as we talked about before, you know, in order to run finite elements, we have to break this up into a lot of simpler shapes. Okay. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to do a mesh. Right. And so first, let's let's do just a default mesh, just so that you guys can kind of see um, how this works, right? And so let's go ahead and right click on mesh on, on the left hand side screen, and then you're going to click on this button called Generate Mesh. Okay. And so we're just going to mesh with the default settings, and so we're just going to do uh, something just by default, um, and then you're going to and then just to kind of show you what's uh, what's going to happen. Okay. And so after you click mesh, you should be able to see this, um, um, you know, this. Um, you know, your, your geometry get meshed like this. And so you can see here that we have our, um, have our plate, but now it's broken up into all of these shapes. And so it's, it's basically pixelated in, in that sense, okay? okay. Um, so was everyone able to generate a, a mesh on their geometry? Yeah. Yes, sir. Great. Okay. And so here is, here is a mesh. Um, and so, um, you know, I'll tell you right now that this is not a very good mesh and because it's, it's very coarse, okay? And so we want to usually we want to refine this guy up a little bit, okay? All right. And so um, by refining the mesh, what I basically mean is I want to make these elements a lot smaller than they are right now, okay? All right. And so in order to do that, we need to set the size of these elements, okay? And so the way that we can do that, there's there's multiple ways you can do this, but this is but this is kind of my favorite way to do it, okay? And the way um, the way I like to do it is I like to set a, a sizing setting on this on this mesh, okay? And so if you right click on mesh and then you go to insert and then you're going to see an option for sizing okay all right and so I, I want you guys to i want you guys to click that sizing okay all right and you can see that it's created a new setting here called sizing okay and what this is going to do is it's, it's going to allow us to set the size of the elements uh, in our mesh right um okay um 
And so, um, you know, just, just kind of general kind of ANSYS tips here, you know, usually a lot of the action kind of happens here in the bottom left. So usually after you do something or after you create a setting, usually the way that you actually specify it is, is here in the bottom left, okay? All right, and so on the bottom left here, you can see we have two lines here that are highlighted yellow, right? And so the first thing we need to do is we need to set the geometry or we need to set the part of the geometry where we want to apply this setting, okay? Um, because when you apply meshing settings, you can apply them to different parts of your of your model. OK. And so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this, uh, select the plate. OK, because we, we want to apply the sizing object to basically everywhere inside the plate. Right. And so you're going to click on the on the plate on the plate geometry. Or so you're going to turn the whole thing green. OK. And then you're going to come to the bottom left of the screen. You're going to click on geometry. And then you're going to click on apply. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and so by doing that, um, you basically said that you're, we're going to apply this sizing setting um, onto this entire face. Okay. And so if you did that correctly, you you uh, you set the, the the you set the entire surface over to the geometry. You should see one face here. Okay. All right. And so now that we've we we define what part of the geometry we want to apply the setting to. Now we need to actually apply that setting, okay? And so let's go ahead and hit and, and select the size, right? And so if you go to this um, this line right here for element size, right now we have an element size of thirty millimeters, about thirty point one one six. Yeah, right? Professor, I have a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine says one body in the geometry, not uh, one face. So probably, I think probably what you did is I think you're probably in three D in in three D analysis uh, mode. Uh, but that's okay. That's um, that's 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 fine for for this one. But um, um, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Next time, uh, yeah, just make sure uh, you go back here and you click on two D for the geometry. Yeah, but but for now, it's it's, it's fine. It's just two D in the analysis type. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, um, I I think I think it should be okay. I think I think it, it I think it's just uh, applying a. Uh, um, it sees this as a body, but it, it should be it should be okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, professor, sorry, I have another question too. So sure. when I when I did the mess the mesh and insert the the sizing, it's not letting me select um, the body of the the structure. Mm. I think maybe like, maybe uh, I get this little plus arrow, but it says geometry no selection, and I can't highlight it green. I see. You you might have to change the selection mode. And so if you if you go to this part of the uh, if you go to, the, to this part of Ansys right here, you can you can choose on which part of the or what kind of uh, what kind of geometry geometrical feature that you can um, you can select. Um, and so right right now it's it's kind of on smart select, and so that's what this option right here is. Um, but in order to force it to select like a surface, like you probably have to click on this one right here, or you can do Control F, I guess. What is so it? You, the, the, the one at the top? Yeah, it's kind of near the top, near the middle. Yeah. Okay, so if I click on that, then what? And so you click on face selector, and so this will tell Ansys that I'm going to select a face. And then, are you able to select the uh, um, the surface like this now? No. Uh, how about how about if you do body? Do you uh, are you able to click on the the whole body like this? The whole thing? No, it's not highlighting green. Um, so what what is it what is it doing for you then or is it is it highlighting at all? No, nothing. It just is the gray square. Mm. Um, so like if I delete like right like if I delete the the sizing option, yeah, then it just goes back to the standard mesh. And yep. then if I if I left click the mesh and then insert the sizing, yep, it goes gray and then it won't let me select my. Surface. Oh, okay. So the so the so this the sizing itself is is gray. So this so this so where where my where I'm where I'm highlighting right now with my mouse, like this thing itself is is gray, right? Oh, I can't see because I kind of have my window a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, hold on. Yep. Oh, uh, the sizing. Yeah. So that so you're saying this thing right here is gray is grayed out. No, yeah. like my whole surface is gray. I don't have any lines on there. And it won't let me select it. Oh, I see. I see. And then it says geometry no selection, and I can't. I can't apply it to anything. I see. I see. Um, 
let me let me double back on on you because there's uh there's there's only 20 minutes left in the class okay. I'll, I'll stick around afterwards to help you out but um okay. yeah i, I want to make sure I, I kind of um kind of finish everything for for everyone else all right sounds good yep okay um and so if you if you are able to select a size let's let's choose a smaller size here and so let's choose something small like uh let's do five millimeters okay and then after you select that size let's go ahead and regenerate the mesh And so you can see here that now our mesh is is a lot more fine, and so you can see it's it's a lot more um, you know our elements are a lot smaller, and this is going to lead to a much more accurate uh, result. Okay. All right, and so that's that's how you modify the size of your of your mesh. Okay. Um, you can also modify the uh, um, the element order and also the um, add some refinement around the hole, and so there's instructions to do that in the PDF. Okay. Um, how do I set it to five millimeters? Um, oh, is, is your units um, in millimeters right here? And so if you go to home and you click on units right here, is this in is this in millimeters? Yep. Mm -hmm. be, care be careful though. It, if was your uh, was your original geometry, did you make that in meters or did you make that in uh, in, in millimeters? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and, and set that to uh, um, set that to, to millimeters. Yeah. Okay. And so there's uh, and so there's instructions here on uh, on how to apply refinement and also how to apply this method object. Um, and so um, you know those those things probably won't make so much sense right now. Um, and so I'm I'm going to skip it for for this just to make sure we get to the boundary conditions. But uh, but make sure you check those out inside inside the PDF. And so I think those are in pages uh, starting on page nine. Um, you know, that's when I go over that stuff. Okay. All right. And so the next step in our process, now that we have a mesh, um, we have, you know, we have a good mesh here. Our next step is to apply the boundary conditions. Okay. All right. And so to apply the boundary conditions, we have two boundary conditions here. Okay. And so first thing we need to do is we need to fix this plate um, against the left wall. Okay. And so we need to apply a fixed constraint here. And then next we need to apply our loading here on the, on the right. Okay. All right, and so to apply boundary conditions, we need to right click on static structural A5. Okay. Uh, we're going to hit insert and then we're going to click on fixed support. Okay. And so what this is going to do is that it's, it's going to make it so that, you know, the area that we select from our, um, uh, for this boundary condition is it's not going to move, it's going to be completely fixed. Okay. And so let's go ahead and click fix support. Okay. Right. And so the region that we want to fix is going to be, um, this region right here or this this edge here on the on the left side of the screen okay and so all we want to do is we want to click on that left edge okay we don't we don't want to select the entire face because that's gonna that's gonna um you know fix the entire one but we just want to select this this edge right here okay all right and so in order to do that we we need to make sure we're on edge selector mode and so let's go ahead and click on this edge here okay um, or you can hit Control e on your keyboard and then you're going to click on this edge on the left hand side right here you're going to click apply okay and so that's going to fix this edge right here right and so let me do it one more time just to uh just to show you okay so let me go ahead and delete this right and so we're going to right click on static structural we're going to hit insert uh fix support okay right we're going to make sure we're on edge selecting mode so to make sure that we can we can grab an edge here we're going to hit on this edge right here on the left hand side and then we're going to hit apply okay and then now that what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that this edge right here is going to be fixed in our simulation and so it's not going to it's not going to move okay um, okay and so uh, next thing we need to do is we need to apply our load right and so our load here is given by p and so this load is going to be a tensile pressure, which is going to be pulled to the right. Okay. Right. And we can see that the, the magnitude of this load here is going to be one times 10 to the fourth uh, megapascal. Right. All right. And so let's go ahead and apply that load here. And so we're going to uh, uh, right click on static structural again. We're going to insert a pressure load. Okay. Um, and so pressure basically apply a constant pressure across a, across a face. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to select the right side of the uh, um, of the plate. Okay. Uh, we're going to hit apply on this. Okay. And so now that um, that makes so that we're selecting, we're going to apply this boundary condition on this side of the uh, of the plate. Okay. All right. And then now we need to specify the um, the magnitude of this um, of this pressure. Okay. We need to set the magnitude and we need to set the direction as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> because ultimately we want to we want to make sure that the force is being applied um, positively to the right. Okay. And so we're going to click on define by here. Okay. Because um, right now, you know, if we apply a force here, and so let's say that we apply a force of one times ten to the fourth. Okay. And so that's ten thousand megapascals. Okay. Right now, what this is going to do is it's it's going to apply it. Um, you know, um, as a compressive force, okay? Because by default, the pressure is gonna be acting um, normal to the surface. And so it's gonna be, it's gonna try to squish it, okay? We don't want that. And so we want this pressure to be applying to the right, okay? And so the way I, I usually like to define these is I usually like to define my forces by components, okay? And so we're gonna go to the bottom left of the screen here, we're gonna click on define by, and instead of normal two, we're gonna click on components. Okay. All right. And so what this will do is that it'll, it'll individually let us apply the X and Y components of, a, of this force that we're going to apply here. Okay. And so since we want to apply this force in the positive X direction, what we're going to do is we're going to set the X component and we're going to set this to positive 10,000 um, megapascals. Okay. All right. And you can see from this arrow here that the arrow is pointing to the right. And so that tells us that our force is going to be tensile and it's going to be pulling it to the to the right. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, any any questions on uh, any questions on this? Okay. Uh, I have. A, it, it's not a big deal, but um, so when I'm on this uh, analysis kind of mode, mm -hmm. it's not. I'm not seeing a mesh. It's just. It's just a, a gray. Okay. Uh, were you so, are you able to see the mesh when you click on mesh up here? Yes. Okay. I I, I think it's fine. So I, I think some some versions of Ansys I think will will have some different rendering stuff where when you're applying boundary conditions it won't show you the mesh. Um, but I think but it, it should be okay. And if as long as your mesh here is checkmarked, so that tells you that the mesh is is actually generated. Um, then it's, you know, if it's not showing up later on, it's, it's just, it's just a rendering, it's just a rendering issue. So it should be okay. Um, when, I, I, oh, go ahead. when I tried to apply the load on the edge, it only lets me apply on the face. Um, are you, um, um, are you in, are you in 3D mode? Or are you in a, um, in a, uh, in 2D mode here? I tried to do 2D, but it doesn't let me like okay. even since the beginning. Okay, that's 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 fine then. If if you're in three D mode, then it's okay. So okay. if if you're in if you're in three D mode and you apply a pressure, but then by default it can you can only select a surface for it. So but that's uh, that's just the default for it. But okay, uh, but you sh you should get the same results because it's uh it's it's just a two D problem. But uh, yeah, you're just doing it in three D. But uh, it'll be it'll be okay. 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 Um. All right. Uh, any other questions on the on the boundary conditions here? <laughs> Okay, all right. And so now that we've applied the boundary conditions, the next step is to solve. And so, you know, solving is really easy. Um, all we have to do is click solve. And that's that's all we have to do. <laughs> and so at this point, you know, you've, you've done all the hard work in, in setting up the finite element simulation. And so now it's the computer's turn to kind of do the, the hard work for you, okay? And so once you click solve, you can see here that the, uh, you, you, you'll have a progress bar here on the bottom right of the screen, okay? And so it, it might it might take a little bit of time because it's uh, especially if you have kind of a, a fairly fine mesh like this, um, but you know it's uh, it's it's uh, right now it's generating the results for you. Okay. Right. And so if your simulation completes successfully, you should be able to see a check mark here next to solution. Okay. Um, and then you're you're good to go. Right. All right. And so now that we've solved. The next step is to actually just is to analyze the results, right? So, so right now we've we've solved the finite element system, um, but we can't actually see the results, right? And so we need we need to actually tell Ansys what results that we want to see, right? 
And so to give you an example, let's go ahead and right click on solution A6 right here, okay? And we're gonna go to insert, okay? And then we're gonna go to total deformation, okay? And so go right click insert deformation total, okay? Right, and so, the, uh, and so what you can see here is it's created another option for you for total deformation, okay? And then you're gonna right click on solution A6, um, and then from here, you're gonna do click on evaluate all results. Okay. It'll think for a little bit. And then um, once it's done, you can go ahead and click total deformation. And then you can see um, your results um, just like this, right? And so you can see here that this is, the, this is the deformation field for this plate, right? And so you can see here that on the right side of the plate, we have a very large deformation um, or not very large, but it's it's, you know, relatively large. And so we have a deformation of about 16.85 uh, millimeters, okay? And then it goes all the way down to zero here on the left side of the plate, right? Uh, and so if you recall from our boundary conditions, you know, on the left side of the plate here, we applied a fixed support boundary condition. And so the, the idea with the fixed support is that, um, you know, there's, uh, there's, no, um, there's no deformation here, right? And so that, and so that works out. All right, and so that's the deformation field. And so let's look at the stress field. And so let's go ahead and right click on solution A6 again, right? Let's go, let's go to insert and then let's go to stress and then let's click on equivalent uh, von Mises stress, okay? All right, and so um, once again, you know, well, now that we have the stress, we can go ahead and right click on solution A6. We click on evaluate all results. And you can click on equivalent stress here. And now we can see the stress field, right? And so you can see here that the stress is uh, mostly concentrated here on the, on the holes, right? So we have a high stress of about 33,000 megapascals here on kind of the upper and lower edges of the, of the holes, okay? Um, so were, uh, were some people able to get these, these results from their finite element simulation? Yes, yes. Okay. okay, great. Um, okay, and so that's and so that's the activity. And so um, you know, I, I did skip a couple steps along the way. And so make sure make sure you read the section on meshing, uh, so that you can add the method object and the refinement. Okay, uh, but that's but that's basically it. So I, I know we went really fast, and uh, you know I know this was kind of a lot of information to process, but um, but but you guys did it. I mean that's that's the finite element process there. Okay, and so this is this was kind of a relatively simple case, and so you know. What we're going to do for the rest of the semester is, you know, we're going to take basically each of these steps apart and we're going to go over each of them in more detail and we're going to go over the nuance and all the different, you know, features and, and different concepts to look out for, right? Um, but, you know, um, in, this, in this activity, you've taken something from start to finish. And so you define the geometry, you meshed it, you applied boundary conditions, you solved it, and that's um, finite elements, right? Um, all right, and so there's there's about seven minutes left in class, and, and I'll, I'll I'll stay after class too. But you know, I know some people were um, um, were hung up on certain steps, and so I want to um, help you guys out. But but if you were able to get to this point, then um, you know um, you can go ahead and get started on the rest of the on the rest of the exercises. And so after you complete the exercise, I, I know that these figures are out of date; they they don't correspond to this uh, activity. But um, but you know. Um, but they uh, but they should give you kind of an idea of what you should look at. Okay, and so if, if you scroll down to the bottom of the activity, you can see here that there's there's some additional exercises that I want you to do um, with these results. Okay, all right, and so um, I'll stick around for probably the next you know 10, 15 minutes, just um, helping people get to this point. Uh, but if you got to this point and you want to um, you know work on this kind of on your own time, then um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, you guys are free to go, and then um, I'll see you guys next week. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this, uh, um, oh, a couple of questions in the chat. And so, um, uh, and so this, this lecture is recorded and it's going to be on the, um, it's going to be on the site um, basically later this evening. Yeah. Um, oh, you're on the wait list. Um, yeah. I'll, um, I'll put, a, I'll put, a, I'll put the, the document in the, uh, in the chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So who's, so uh, Oh, go ahead. I have a question. Um, so how do you go about saving the work? Like, where do you save it? Is it on the main project thing or? 
Yes, great question. So um, if you go back to Workbench, and so that's the um, that's the first program that we open, and you click on Save Project there, then that's um, then that'll that'll save the project for you. And so it'll save a couple files, and so it'll save a project file, and it'll also save a folder uh, for you. And so you need to you need to save both. And so if you if you're saving this to the cloud, you need to upload both the project file and that folder um, together. Um, but if you're saving it to a flash drive, then you know make sure you save both the folder and the, uh, the file name. Okay. Uh, let me uh, let me let me um, let me upload the um, the PDF um, for the waitlisted people here. Um, oh, I only did that to one person. Let me do that to everybody. Sorry about that. And then I'll I'll show you what I mean for that. Okay. And so the uh, and so the the PDF is in the chat if you if you're on the waitlist. Okay, and so to save, uh, what you need to do is you need to come back to you need to come back to Workbench here, right? You're gonna click Save or File, and then you're gonna click um, Save or Save As, either one. Okay. And so let me save this to my my desktop, um, just so that you can just so that you can kind of see. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let me call this um, EGME Five Forty Activity One. Okay. Okay, and so it'll take some time to save. Okay, and so you can see now that it's saved. I'm going to go to my desktop here. Okay, and you can see here that it's created this file right here. This file called EGME 540 Activity One, and so this is the project file. But you can also see that it also created this folder right here called EGME 540 Activity One underscore files. Okay. And so you need you need to save both of these files, and so you either need to email these both to yourself, or you need to save this both to your flash drive, um, um, or you can um, save this both to the cloud. But make sure you save both because you if you try to just save just this one, um, you're going to get some errors where it said it can't it can't find the files. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Professor, I have a quick question. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I did the homework already, and I, I noticed one small inconsistency. I wanted to question you about it. So sure. mm -hmm. on, what is it, sheet, on sheet 14 of the PDF, um, you specify that the load should be 1,000 megapascals. Mm -hmm. um, but then in other places, you say 10,000 megapascals. I, I did the entire homework assuming that the 1000 number was correct but i i also labeled all of my studies that i used 1000 are you gonna when you're grading it are you gonna look for the exact numbers that you're expecting or are you gonna do it on a case by case like do you know what i'm asking yeah 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 it's uh i'll, I'll do it case by case and so yeah i i I, I try to change the numbers on these kind of year by year, just because it's I, I've reused this activity four uh, four times now, and so I, there are some there are some typos uh, within it. Um, and so you know if you did everything with one thousand, then that's that's usually pretty easy for me to spot. And okay. so and so what I'm more grading on is you know if if you got as long as you've got a result plot that makes sense, and so you know the stress is distributed well, like your mesh looks good. That's that's what I'm going to be mostly grading you on, but the exact okay, numbers great. itself, I'm I'm not going to be looking at. I also spe I specifically mentioned in all my results that I used uh, the 1,000, so okay. I think that helps too. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, thank that's, you. Uh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. be able to show me really fast what I'm doing wrong? Because I can't switch it from 3D to 2D. Uh, if you, if you're doing it 3D, is it's 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 okay. I mean, you should uh, be able when I when I tried to apply the load. Um, it wasn't letting me choose that edge or that face. It would uh, apply the load on the on the C direction on that entire face. Okay. Um, do you want to share your screen? I think that might be easiest for me to. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, no, I can't. You might you might have to click. Um, so there's uh, you have to click share screen, and then there's a, a blue button called share. Oh yeah. What about now? Yeah, I can see it now. So yeah, there's a, there's the arrow for the drop down, and it just nothing happens. Okay, I, I I think it's okay, honestly. Like it's uh um you should be able to get the same results, um, but uh, it's even um, if the the load is on on the entire face. Uh, let me uh, let me let me see that. So uh, can you open up a uh, Ansys model? Mechanical? Um, either one, either one, model or setup. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Taking a while. Well, there you go. Oh, you guys are on R2. Maybe that's why, because I'm on R, I'm on R1. I see. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and delete this pressure. Um, go ahead and right-click pressure and click delete. All right. So let's let's make a new one. Let's go go ahead and insert pressure. Okay. Um, and then you see I how see. I don't have the edge selection uh, here? It's only face. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you can you rotate the body to the to the right a little bit? And then. You might be able to click just a very small edge right there. There you go. Um, yeah, and, and if you apply the pressure on that well, one, me. oh, I tried that earlier as well, and it just it doesn't let me. It, it only lets me on, on the face. I see. I see. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, usually. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, go ahead and close the uh, close mechanical. I even started a new one yeah. to see if it let me um, change it to 2D, and uh, it doesn't let me. Oh, oh that's really interesting. Oh. Huh. So uh, I don't know if it's a setting issues or. Oh, yeah, that's, hmm, that's very strange. Um, Go ahead, go ahead and save this. Go ahead and save this project because I, I know you did a lot of work with it already. Um, but try, but try starting just a completely new one from from scratch, and then and then see if that um, see if you're able to change that to two D after this. Yeah, I, yeah. Sometimes, like, sometimes that's sometimes that's usually the best thing to to do. Yeah. Just exit everything. Yeah, and then just start workbench again. Yeah. All right. Why don't you give that a try? And because I know um, I know Jacob still had some some issues, and so let me let me go help him out for a little. Okay. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jacob, are you still here? Screen All right, do you want to uh, do you want to share your screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get all this stuff out of the way here. So, sorry, let me get it like a good view here. Mm -hmm. So when I go to the mesh, insert sizing, can't. Can't select it. Huh. And I did this, did this, won't let me, it's the smart one, can't, oh. I can't select it. Oh, that is, that is very strange. Um, like I even tried, like, I, and then if I delete it, you know, left insert sizing here, still won't let me select it i see uh can you can you delete the sizing again you can select can you select it now no oh that's very strange um let's do this and so there's there's a different way that you can set the mesh uh, size and so if you let left click on mesh on the left over there here yeah um i'll just left click it and so on the um, on the bottom yeah. left, you see element size. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's let's change our units first. So let's change this to millimeters. And so if you go to the top middle, do you see the button called units? Uh, I I, no, I don't see it here. Uh, to the right, to the right a little bit. To the right. Right, right, right. Oh, there we go. Yep. So go okay. millimeters. Yep. All right. So let's change the uh, let's change the element size. Let's change it to five. Oh, can you click? Uh, so it looks like there's a P on there. Can you can you left click on the P next to element size? Oh no. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, can you can you change the uh, element size now? Okay. So let's go ahead and right click mesh and let's go ahead and try regenerating it. Okay. Now we're uh, generate mesh. Okay, so that uh, so that should work. 
let's try it one more time because I, I I've never seen that P before. And so let's try right clicking mesh again and click sizing and let's see if we can select the, the thing now. Yeah, so let's go ahead and try. No, okay. Okay, yeah, there's something, yeah, there's something weird going on, but uh, but that's okay. Now, let's go ahead and delete the sizing again because now now at least the mesh, the mesh looks good. So now we're ready to to move on. Professor, sorry to interrupt. I have to go to another class, but I did start a new um, workbench, and it's mm -hmm. the same issue where it's not letting me select um, 2D. Okay. So okay. maybe um, I could just reach out to you later via okay. email, or, or even I'll, I'll Google it and see if I could figure it out myself. But okay, yeah, yeah. Send me send me an email, and then we can we can reconnect um, afterwards uh, too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Bye. All right, so let's let's apply the boundary conditions now. And so let's uh, and so let's see if we can get that to work. So let's go ahead and right click static structural. Uh, right above that. Oh, oops. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and insert. Um, let's do fix support. Is it alphabet? No, it's not. Uh... Yeah, down a little bit. Down, down. Okay. Fix support. Yep. All right. So let's see. Let's see if we can click the um, the edge. And, and so let's change it to edge selecting mode, um, kind of near the top middle. Here. Um, that one, the edge. middle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Can you select the left edge of the? Huh. No. This is so weird. Why is it not letting you select anything? Um, can you uh, uh, can you rotate the the view a little bit? Like, do you have a a, a middle click on your mouse? Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So click that. All right. So hit apply on the left hand side. Perfect. Okay. And so now let's let's rotate it to the other side. Like that. Yep. And so now let's go ahead and right click on static structural A5 on the left. So same same uh, place where you applied okay. the fixed port. Yep. Okay. Let's go ahead and insert okay. pressure. Okay. Yep. And then uh, let's go ahead and select the, the right edge, the one that you have there. This one here, yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. okay. Go ahead and hit apply on the left hand side. Right. Okay. And so now do you see the setting called def defined by? Defined by? Yeah. It's kind of move your mouse up yeah, a little bit. Yes. Normal to? Uh -huh. Yes. And so we want to change that to components. Okay. Yep. All right. And so now for the X component, put in uh, 1,000 or let's put in 10,000 megapascal. Okay. Okay. Hit enter. All right, and so um, now your boundary conditions are there. Um, so let's 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 put in the solution fields too. So we'll go ahead and, and right click solution A six. Sorry, I'm trying to do it. Okay. Uh, all righty. Okay, go ahead, hit insert, sure. and then go to deformation. Do total. Oh, the very top one, deformation. Oh, deformation. Okay. And then total. Yep. And then let's uh, go ahead and right click solution A6 again. And we're going to insert a field for uh, equivalent stress. And so you're going to go to insert stress, third one, and then first one, equivalent von Mises. All right. And so near kind of the top left of the screen, you see a lightning bolt. Click uh, solve. All right. So now it's going to solve. And so the, the progress bar is in the very bottom left. And so right now it's like a 10%. Oh, if you, if a permission thing comes up, just hit OK. Yeah, just to grant uh, grant Ans grant Ansys permission to see all of your private data. It's OK. <laughs> okay, I don't know why that took so long. All right. So yeah, it, it 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 takes a little bit of time. So yeah, it's going. No, I mean uh, the it, I was I kept clicking the the allow and it wasn't going through for some reason. Ah, I see. You know what, maybe that's the problem here. Maybe that's why I couldn't select it. Oh, maybe, oh, it could be. Um, but, oh yeah, but it looks like, looks like it, it finished. It looks like it looks good. Um, okay, yeah, the, well, this is good, but I'm saying I had that other, that other notification open and maybe, uh, maybe my computer was blocking the select feature. It could be. It could be. That, that could be one thing. Um, but yeah. But here. But here's another. But this is kind of another way that you can um, you can get those results. So. Um, so yeah. I think I think if you just do it this way, I think you should be good to go. Um, definitely. Definitely the selecting thing with the mesh. You know. I think we'll we'll have to fix that at some point. 
Um, but at least at least for now, you can you can move forward with the activity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait. Uh, so this isn't the completed activity that we've. Yeah. So there there's a few more exercises that I want you to do at the bottom of the PDF. But this but this kind of gives you the starting point. And so from here, I I basically have you guys just kind of play around with the settings a little bit, um, and then just try out kind of just slightly different things. But uh, but you know, but from here, you know, you've you've kind of taken you've taken the finite elements from start to finish, um, and then you can now just kind of modify some certain things and and see how it how it changes the results. Oh, okay. So there's just a little bit at the bottom of the PDF. So yep. what about that other like thing? Because this looks different than the field that you got. Yeah, yeah. So for the uh, for the other thing, um, so for right now, just just kind of try just kind of try to do everything you can with this. I think you should be able to do most of the exercises with uh, with this. Um, I think the only thing you're missing right now is the refinement around the whole. And so, um, what do you mean? Um, and so uh, one and so one thing I, I have you guys do is I add um, I, I have you guys refine the mesh around the hole because around the hole you can see that the the stress is concentrated around there. And so. Usually, yeah. whenever you have um, stress concentration, you want to add some additional elements there to make sure it, the the solution is accurate. Um, so let, let's let's try it one more time. Actually, so let's go. Let's try a right click right click mesh on the left. Click okay. on insert. Alrighty. And click so on good. refinement. Uh, refinement. Yeah. All right. And so um, let's. Um, can you rotate the the plate a little bit so that you kind of see the? Oh, you can select it. Um, so go ahead and try to select the in the inner part of the hole. Yes, click that. Okay. okay. Go ahead and hit um, on the left hand side, you see geometry, no selection. Click that. Okay. Click apply. And then set the refinement to two. And so if you click on refinement, um, click on the right arrow. Yep. So let's go ahead and, and regenerate the mesh. So right click mesh and click generate mesh. Okay. Right. So it's, uh, it's, it's regenerating right now. How do I make this not look so wonky? Uh, what do you mean? Like it's all tilted. I can't. Um, oh, let's see um, this is. oh, here we go. Yeah, if you, if you, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. The zoom camera just blocks like a lot of the, what, what, what's up with that? Oh, oh, that's interesting. Um, hmm. That did not do what I thought it was going to do. <laughs> um, can you click uh, click on the refinement object again? Let me see that. Left click on refinement. Oh, okay. So it selected the whole face. Um, all right. Let's let's let, let's let's do this. Um, go ahead and click on um, on the top of the screen. Right now you're on surface select mode. So go ahead and click edge. Yep. So go ahead and click click on the inner the inner surface of the hole again. This. Yep. Okay. And so on the on the left side of the screen where you see uh, geometry one face, click on that, click apply. Okay, so now you're on one edge. And so let's let's regenerate the mesh. So let's right click mesh, and then let's click um, generate mesh. Okay, that looks that looks a lot better. So, and so do you see now just around the hole we have. Uh, a much finer mesh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's 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 what you need for the activity. And so let's go ahead and click solve again uh, at the at the top. Okay. And so let's go ahead and click. Uh, to, um, oh, it's still it's still thinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So okay. go ahead and click uh, total deformation and equivalent stress. Click, just click them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This looks a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This looks this looks good. Okay. So this is uh, and so I think you should be good to go. And so now that you have the uh, refinement object there, um, you should be able to to work on on the rest of the exercises. Okay, so can you just like what is this uh, what is this data telling us that there's a sixteen point eight four eight maximum total millimeter deformation in that side of the plate? Yep, 
Yep. And so it's, it's all, it's all coded by the colors. And so, uh, and so in the regions that are red, and so those, those regions have about a 16.848 deformation. Um, and then the, in the areas that are green, that has, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard to tell when the color scale is, is so um, wide like this, but you know, you can see that those areas have about like maybe a deformation of eight millimeters. And so it's kind of in between 9.3 and 7.4. Um, and you can see that the deformation kind of varies from zero at the left-hand side to 16.48. 848 on the right. Um, and so that's what the deformation field is telling you. And if you click on the equivalent stress field, mm -hmm. and so this is where you can see the areas where stress is, is high. And so um, it, this one's a little bit harder to see because the stress is concentrated around the holes. Um, but you can see that uh, if you kind of zoom in around the hole, you can see that there's some areas of red. Um, How do I zoom in on that? Oh, just like this. Oh, yeah, yeah right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, so like right above, right below the hole, like the, that's where stress is concentrated. And so you have a stress there about 33,061 um, megapascals. And so that's the areas of highest, of highest stress. And so, and so what that tells us basically is that, you know, if we keep pulling on this plate, then the plate is probably gonna break, like where it's gonna break and where it's gonna fracture is probably gonna be at those locations right there where the stress okay. is the highest. What about this like X-shaped pattern? That, yeah. So that's just the way that the, the plate handles the stress distribution. Yep. Yep. And so like that it X, would, it would it would fail in like kind of an X shape. Yep. Yep. And so if you if you kind of pull kind of extremely, then those are kind of the areas where stress is the highest, and so it would it would fail in, in those areas. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Alrighty. And then uh, you said it just go back to workbench and save yep. save as. Yep. So you go to workbench and you click save. Um, it's going to save uh, and, and, you, and you pick a, a location on your desktop or wherever is convenient for you. Um, and you can you can save it from there. Yeah. So just, uh, I don't know, 540 assignment. Uh, I guess it's not really an assignment. Just uh, and this will give me everything I need. Um, I mean, so for the activity, um, for the rest of the exercises, I'm going to have you modify some things a little bit. No, I don't, um, mean, I don't mean in terms of like, uh, I'm, I know we're not done yet. I mean, like I, you said something earlier about saving multiple, like, you know, the folder and the file. If I just save it here to my own computer on my desktop, I, I have everything I need automatically, right? Oh, yeah. Open yeah. This up again. Oh yeah, yeah. So if this if this is on your home computer already, then then you don't have to worry about transferring stuff. Yeah, but, this is just my laptop. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, but for, for but for those who are working on like their on the lab computers, then um, then you have to make sure you transfer the right files. But but if you're on your desktop, it'll it'll all be there for you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, alrighty. And then so this is pretty much it. This is all I need. Yep, yep. And so that's uh, that's all I had planned to get through. And so. Um, and so, yeah, that's the, that's the finite element method, start to finish. Okay, cool. Alrighty. I appreciate you staying late and helping me out. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Glad we were able to, uh, to work through this stuff. Alrighty. Cool. Thanks professor. I yep. will see you, uh, next week, I guess. Great. See you next week. Have a good weekend. You too.